we are. Early on in the cycle, women's levels of estrogen are relatively high. And because this is a period of time that's associated with the ability to conceive, um, researchers have proposed that estrogen levels should predict not only women's interest in um, sex sort of generally and their desire for sex, um, but should also influence the types of qualities that they emphasize in their choice of partners. Um, and in particular, um, this research predicts that um, when estrogen levels are high, that it should increase women's preference for men who have cues associated with, um, the, with uh, testosterone. And the reason for this is that testosterone is sort of a hypothesized uh, good genes marker. Um, so it's something that um, is associated because it is an immunosuppressive and it's metabolically costly. Um, the idea is that only men who have sort of low mutation loads um, and who have relatively um, robust immune systems um, will be able to produce um, relatively high levels of testosterone. And so it's believed to be an indicator of things like health and developmental stability and other things that in the evolutionary world we just like call having good genes. And so, um, and there's been a lot of research supporting this general idea that at high fertility or during times in the menstrual cycle, when estrogen is high, so right near ovulation, um, and you know, five or so days prior, so usually like days seven to 12 in the cycle, um, women express um, and exhibit a greater preference for facial masculinity, um, the scent of men who are have higher levels of testosterone, um, you know, faces and voices and, um, and even the gait of men who have higher levels of testosterone. Um, and so, so this research has been going on for, for quite some time now. I mean, it's, it's, it's received a pretty fair amount of evidence. Um, more recently, researchers then asked themselves, you know, well, given that uh, women um, have this greater preference for testosterone markers when estrogen is the dominant sex hormone, um, what happens when you have women on hormonal contraceptives when their estrogen levels are kept really low um, because you're suppressing um, egg maturation, which then in turn suppresses estrogen levels? Um, and so what the prediction was is that if we look at the mate preferences of women who are naturally cycling and then compare them to the mate preferences of women who are on hormonal birth control, that we should expect to see that the natural cyclers have a preference for on average more, you know, sort of masculine male faces and males who possess more testosterone markers than what we should see among women who are on hormonal contraceptives. Um, and this um, hypothesis has been pretty well supported by the research. And the research seems to indicate that not only do women who are on birth control um, desire uh, less masculine male faces, but they also seem to be choosing these men as their partners. Um, so for example, in one study, they um, collected a large sample of partnered men, right? So men who were in relationships, they took photographs of the men, and then they had the men indicate whether or not they had um, been chosen by their partner um, when they were on or off of hormonal birth control. Um, and what they found was that when they divided up the, the men and placed the photographs of the men that were chosen by women when they were on hormonal birth control in one pile, and then took the photographs of the men who were chosen by the naturally cycling women and put them in another pile, um, and then had them all evaluated on things like masculinity um, and using both subjective measures, so people looking at the photographs and evaluating how masculine is this guy, um, but also using computer programs, computer algorithms that are able to detect certain types of things like facial width to height and some other things that are associated with um, testosterone presence. And what they find is that, um, is that uh, the, the men who were chosen as partners by the pill takers had less masculine faces than did the men who were chosen by the natural cyclers. And so all of this stuff seems to indicate that, um, you know, that uh, hormonal contraceptive use um, can influence um, the types of qualities that women are really prioritizing in their choice of partners with um, women who are naturally cycling, emphasizing cues associated with testosterone presence and sort of sexiness, um, and women who are on hormonal birth control focusing on other things. And what the research seems to show um, is that the types of qualities that women who are on hormonal birth control, the types of qualities that they're focusing on in their partner choice tends to be things like financial security, 
um, and a person's sort of capacity for um, investment in children, right? And so you get these like very different sets of priorities um, among the pill takers and the natural cyclers. Um, and of course, this is really provocative because people don't like choose their partner and then stay on hormonal contraceptives forever or stay off of hormonal contraceptives forever. And so this, of course, raises the possibility that there could end up being mismatches that develop if a person chooses their partner when they were on the pill and then they go off of it, or if they choose their partner when they're off the pill and they go on it. Um, and there's some evidence that seems to suggest that this can cause some um, sort of shakeups within the context of, of romantic relationships. <laughs>